Hey everybody, Audrey here, the fit, fearless, and faithful mom. Welcome back to my channel. Before we begin, I have to give a little shout out to my son who is six and I was getting ready to shoot this tag video from Dina that I was tagged in, but I have to give my son credit because he picked out my outfit. He picked out my earrings and he said, mom, now you look beautiful. And I said, thanks son. And he said, now you are ready to be the fearful, faithless mom. Okay, let me say it. Did anybody else catch that? Because so I said, you know what, son? Sometimes I am fearful. So, but that was cute. Anyway, yeah, today's video is a tag from my good friend Dina over at A Catholic Wife. I am sure that many of you are subscribed to her channel, but if you're not, you're missing out. So please go ahead and tap that subscribe button. She is a wealth of knowledge. She is a mom. She is a wife. She is passionate and on fire for the Catholic faith. So I am so thankful to know her. So thank you, Dina, for the video tag. Let's get into the questions. At the end, I am going to tag several other Catholic mamas. Question number one, what right are you in your faith in Catholicism? I was baptized and raised Roman Catholic. You know, honestly, I never knew until I was older and in my late 20s that there are 20 some odd other, what is it, 23, 27, correct me, um, rites in the Catholic faith. All right, number two, cradle Catholic, revert, or convert. I am a cradle Catholic through and through. Um, kind of stepped away, but I wouldn't call myself a revert at all, but just, just kind of you know, pulled an Adam and Eve and ran away for a little bit, but came back super quick. Number three, do I go to the Novus Ordo or the Latin Mass? Uh, we are a Latin Mass going family. Uh, we officially made the switch to go consistently to Latin Mass back in January. And it's been wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. So check out some of my videos. I have a couple of videos on the Latin Mass and why we attend it. It is not knocking the Novus Ordo, uh, the Novus Ordo goers at all don't want to separate and say, well, you're on this, that side of the fence and I'm on this side of the fence. Not here to do that, not play in that game, but our family, we love the Latin map, love all about it. So read all about it. Okay. Number four, what is my favorite prayer? That's a tough one. Uh, I pray the rosary twice a day. I pray it by myself in the morning and then I pray the rosary with the kids in the afternoon. So I love all the prayers of the rosary. My favorite prayer right now though, honestly, is the St. Michael prayer. And I know there's different versions of it. Like in the beginning, it's St. Michael the Archangel. Some people say protect, some people say defend, we say defend. And then towards the end, instead of cast into hell Satan, we say thrust. So, cause that was an, like, that's another version. I prefer thrust into hell Satan. I don't want to like mm, cast you. No, no, I'm going to mm, say Michael's going to thrust you. Oh, here is, here's another favorite prayer. Okay. If you do not have prayers for after you receive the Eucharist, totally pray some prayers. Like if you have like 15 minutes if you're at the Latin mass and then I don't know, maybe five to 10 minutes if you're at the Novus Ordo. And so yes, you say your prayers, but then I used to like, you know, look around and stuff like that. Okay, now I say, I say the rosary a lot during mass. The prayers for after communion are amazing. They are so amazing. St. Augustine, St. Boniface, who else? St. Thomas Aquinas have these gorgeous, gorgeous prayers for after you receive the Holy Eucharist. And one of my favorite parts, may this uh, holy oblation cleave to my innermost bowels. All right. When I read that, this was months and months ago. When I read that, I was like, whoa. Because when you think about receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are not only being spiritually fed, we are being physically fed as well. It is incredible. And when you, when you read those words and when you hear those words, and when you reflect on those words, you're like, oh my goodness, the Lord is going inside of me and like going all throughout me. It is incredible when you really reflect on those words. It really blows your mind. 
So that's another, I can't really pinpoint one of my favorite post-communion prayers. I just love all of them. So I read all of them after I receive the Lord. Number five, what religious item do I travel with? I always have my rosary beads with me. I have a specific set that I have all over. We have so many rosary beads in our house, but I have a specific set that actually came from Medjugorje. I've had them, I don't know, maybe for 15, 20 years now. I also have a statue of Our Lady that was that is from Medjugorje. It's actually the one that is in our schoolroom. But I always travel with my rosary beads. I always travel with holy water. Oh, and fun. So when I was watching Dina's video, she had mentioned that her husband blesses their car with holy water and stuff. And I quickly got my kids and I was like, hey, I was like, check this out. Somebody else does this too. Because I also travel with holy water whenever we go on a long trip. I bless the car, we say um, a decade, the rosary, while I am blessing it, do bless the inside and the outside of the car when we're going on long trips. Number five, what is my favorite part of the mass? Ah, oh my goodness. Okay, so my favorite part of the mass is when, during consecration, it's the beginning of consecration, and they start ringing the bells for the first time, and the whole congregation goes, Whoosh. it is the mass wave, and like mass as in like like catholic mass and then like mass of people who wait as soon like oh the lord is here consecration is happening and as soon like those bells are ringing and the whole congregation goes whoosh. oh i love it i love it and then my eyes are fixated on the altar mm, love consecration it is so beautiful and then when the bells are rung again and the deacon lifts up is it the no the stole goes around the neck mm. the priest's garments when that he is wearing during mass when he raises up the body of christ and we say my lord and my god <sighs> i love that like mm, jesus you're right there and then when jesus blood is raised and the de and like bells are rung again and you look up you're like oh my lord and my god that <sighs> love it. Mm. Can't really pick a, a fate. So those are like my three favorite parts of the mass. And I think it goes without saying too that receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Number six, do I go to adoration? No, I don't. I don't. I probably should. I know I should. Um, right now, interesting time. Adoration is really not readily available. Yeah, I don't, I think it's, it's like a time thing. And what I'm trying to be mindful of is how, how many devotions I'm having because hmm, my non-denominational husband always knows when I start having too many devotions because, and he asks me now, he says, you're doing too much. You're doing too much because you're getting grumpy. And so right now I am doing so much with my little domestic church that's here. I guess I should. I really don't. I should make the time. I should make more time. Maybe something's got to give. I don't know. But no, I don't go to adoration. Number seven. When was the last time that I went to confession? Oh, I went last week. Uh, no, two weeks, a week and a half ago. I went a week and a half ago. I do try going regularly. And by regularly, I use the examinant of conscience. There are different versions of them. I do use the Latin version. And that one is like, whoa, super detailed. So there is one on Laudate. There is one on, you know, I think, I Pieta too. But check out the examinant of conscience. And if you really want to go deep and you really want to be more mindful and be more humble, I suggest getting the Latin one because it'll really make you think about yourself in a non-scrupulous way either. Please be careful of that. Um, that's something that I had struggled with. So don't do that. But yeah, two weeks ago. And then the time before that was June 13th, whatever that Saturday was. All right, number eight. What is my favorite book by a saint? Anything written by St. Maximilian Colby. I absolutely love him. I think it's great. I would love to be able to read St. Augustine. So that's something that maybe in like 10 years, I will be able to really read because it's tough. 
Um, that's a tough chew. Number nine, who is a convert to the faith that has helped me? Oh, well, this is a fun one. I can't really name one because all of them have helped me. I love talking to converts because they have an even deeper understanding in some ways than I do in regards to the faith. Like I'm a cradle Catholic and I think sometimes with cradle Catholics, we can take our faith for granted and that's not right. It's not just like, oh, let's just make the sacraments and like, okay, I'm Catholic. No, 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 no. Said it before, I'll say it again. You as the parent, your parents made a promise to God that they would raise you Catholic. You made a promise to God that you would raise them Catholic pour every ounce of your being into them and help them on their, help them understand our faith super deeply. And so a person coming into the Catholic faith just is such a gorgeous individual because they have such a fresh perspective. <laughs> uh, some of them have called me out on something, like, hey, just questioning, questioning this. And so a lot of converts sometimes will keep you on your toes and it's fun and it's great. Who is a cradle Catholic that has helped you? Hands down, my dad. My dad and my mom, absolutely. Uh, my dad reads a lot. He's also my workout buddy. Hi, dad. Love you. Hope your workout's going good right now. I love my dad. And I love my mom. And they are super devout people. I love the conversations that I'm able to have with them. So hands down, my mom and dad. I am so thankful that they never gave up on me, as cheesy as that sounds. But they never strayed from the faith. They have never taken our faith for granted. They are exemplary models of living out their vocations, both married and then as husband and wife, and even grandparents as well. When they are around my kids, they make sure that, you know, they're always talking about the faith. They pray the rosary with my kids. They explain things. I mean, my mom taught CCD, but they are traditionally Catholic as well, which is beautiful. So my parents, hands down. Lots of Creole Catholics that are on here have helped me too. I look up to a lot of them. Number 11, what is the weirdest thing about being Catholic? This one's hard um, because there's so many. There's so many. I think the first one would be having to defend, defend Catholicism. Why are we defending something that other people have borrowed and they borrowed it 1500 years later? I don't, I don't understand that. That's always been mind blowing. Like I saw a, I saw, I saw somebody's t-shirt and I had a picture of Martin Luther and it had like a big nail and the shirt said nailed it. And all I thought was, what did you nail? Like, yes, I know you're your thesis you nailed but always having to to defend always having to be on my toes now another thing too is having to always explain to the best of my ability transubstantiation like this is the body of christ and people are like wait, wait, wait no it's a symbol no 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 boo thing it's not because you know what said it a couple weeks ago in the protestant bible it says this is my body why do I have to defend that when it's in? I don't, I don't understand that. So those are the two things that are always just mind, mind boggling. And lately, especially with family, I feel like I've been having to defend myself. I have kept quiet and I've kept quiet. And then a little while ago, I finally said something and I went, oh, maybe I shouldn't have. And Oh, my dear friend, maybe you're watching this. She said, the Holy Spirit wanted you to say that. Don't feel bad about it. I was like, oh, you're awesome. She is a beautiful Catholic woman. I look up to her so much. Okay, and finally, the last one, number 12. What is the best thing about being Catholic? Catholic means universal. I am part of the universal church. I am part of the one true, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church that hasn't changed. Had there been some questionable individuals over the past 2,000 years? Yeah, but the dogmas have not changed. The traditions have not changed. I can receive the gift of the Eucharist. When someone asks me, when were you saved? I was saved in August 1987 when my parents baptized me into the Catholic faith in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And when I'm asked, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yeah, I do every week, sometimes twice a week. I receive him in the gift of the Eucharist that 
the Lord gave to us the night of the Last Supper, and then when he fulfilled the fourth cup. The gift of the Eucharist is amazing. Through the gift of the Eucharist, I can touch heaven. I can touch heaven every single time I receive the Eucharist. Why am I going to cry? You know why I'm going to cry? is because I am so in love with the Lord, and I will walk through fire to get to the Lord. When I get on my knees and the priest stands in front of me and the patent is placed underneath me and I tilt my head back and the priest prays, makes the sign of the cross with the body of Christ over me. And the deacon who's standing there, he is also praying for my soul but when it comes down to it, I want to. And the best thing in my life is receiving the Eucharist. I'm receiving the Lord. And like I said, like in one of the, the, the prayers, right, post-communion, may this holy oblation cleave to my innermost hearts. Uh, what is it? My innermost bowel. Whoa. I, I, I feel like, no, I did. I took that for granted for majority of my life. And praise be to God that it already three of 33 these past couple years these past five ten years i have realized what that means hey cleat lord like whoa okay i can just keep talking about this just so in love like somebody not only died for me not only died for me two thousand years ago but but left me the gift of him every single time i go to mass what? That's awesome. Just awesome. Alrighty, everybody. Wow, this was chatty. Okay, Dina, thank you so much for tagging me in this fun video. I'm so thankful for it. This was great. These are good questions. Here's to getting to know me a little bit better. And now I would love to tag my friend Lauren. So Lauren, tag, you're it. Let's answer these little questions. Lisa over at a Catholic Marathon Mom. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you tap that subscribe button, tap that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment below. God bless you. God bless your family. Stay happy, stay healthy. This was fun. This was really great. Thank you, Dina. Okay, make sure you check out Dina's channel. Her video is linked in the description box below. Take care, everybody. Bye.